welcome everybody. How are you guys doing today? Good. All right, perfect. Well, before we get started, I'm gonna go over some, um, some rules, housekeeping rules. First and foremost, if you wanna please silent your phones or put them on do not disturb. He's starting. I Good. Uh, Brian, Brian, we're getting started. If you wanna please bring it down, thank you very much. All right, thank you. All right, so uh, silent your phone. If you need to take a call, you I can step outside I think we need and another roll. You know, take the call. And roll? next is if you have any questions, you can wait till the end. We're gonna have a Q&A at the end. Any questions that you might have, you can write them down throughout the presentation. And please wait for the microphone to get to you before you ask the question so the people on the live stream can actually hear the question. All right, and um, so now our presenter of the night is our Chief Operations Officer, Mr. Oli Rodriguez. He's been side by side with Manuel, creating and running a lot of uh, public relations campaigns, public relations activity, very successfully. He's gonna share some very successful actions tonight that will help all of us with our business. So without further ado, please give it up for Mr. Oli Rodriguez. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, I'll give you this, Ernest, so in case you're the mic runner. And my audio is good, right, Jimmy? Online? OK, good. Welcome, guys. Thank you for being here. Appreciate that. Um, I'm going to first show you guys a video. Um, normally, Manuel and I do these uh, lectures together. Uh, he had some urgent uh, matters to address. But I do have him virtually. And the video that I want to uh, show you guys today, it's a four minute video, um, and it's gonna tie into this. I'll tie it into it towards the, the middle of it. But this video is about, if you've ever been to the back where the coffee bar is, there's um, uh, AGM's core values, okay? And these are the, basically what we uh, have our staff practice and drill and learn. Um, and it's kind of our, um, like successful actions of running things, any activity. And I'll explain more about why we're playing that little video as we carry on. But first, I want to introduce Virtual Manuel. All Hello, right. everyone. Thank you so much for coming to the workshop tonight. Manuel has entrusted me, his Ninja AI robot, to present this video. So let's dive right in. I would like to go over our core values with you, the AGM core values core values, traits or qualities that are not just worthwhile, but also represent an individual's or an organization's highest priorities, deeply held beliefs, and core fundamental driving forces. They are the heart of what your organization and its employees stand for in the world. At AGM Marketing, we, the ninjas, believe in the following core values. Be a professional. Everything we do, we do it like a professional. We dress professionally, speak professionally, have manners, and we never tolerate sloppy work or laziness. If you are responsible for something, you give it 100% or you don't do it all. When an action, product, or task is completed, the AGM ninja responsible for it should ask themselves the following question, are you proud of it? The answer should invariably be absolutely. Never stop learning. At AGM Marketing, we believe that the growth of our company relies entirely on individual growth, and the moment we stop learning is the exact moment we cease to grow. This same statement is applicable at an individual level. The moment you stop learning is the moment you stop earning. AGM ninjas are encouraged to learn daily and even beyond work hours with the understanding that their growth within the group is entirely dependent on a continuous increase of their skills, which is only accomplished through a never-ending first and attainment of knowledge. Positive attitude. AGM marketing has zero tolerance for negativity. An individual within the group speaking negatively about co-workers, clients, or prospects will not make it within this group. We use positive language with our co-workers and clients including words and phrases like absolutely, definitely, my pleasure, and I would be happy to do that for you. An AGM ninja never looks to explain, justify, or minimize mistakes whether real or imagined. Ninjas take responsibility for their actions and the effects they create on clients, prospects, or even co-workers. This is a very important part of our company culture. Figure it out. The FIO line is the oldest line in AGM's history. 
we live in an information age. Whatever you don't know the answer to, someone else does. FIO means you don't know what you don't know. At AGM, we figure things out using the massive amount of resources this internet age has to offer. Google, YouTube, articles, communities, co-workers, and others. The phrase it's not possible or it can't be done has usually come to mean I don't have the intelligence, the energy, or the push to find an answer to this issue. An AGM ninja figures it out always and in the process will likely discover his or her true potential. Speed. Everything we do at AGM Marketing, we do with speed. We follow up with speed. We send out proposals with speed. We respond to emails with speed. We answer the phones with speed. Our speed of execution brought us to where we are today and will take us to the next level. AGM is a fast moving rocket ship and we consider speed to be one of the key ingredients to our success. Walk the line, AGM Marketing is a professional company with very high expectations from clients. Every time an action, project, campaign, product, or service is completed, every AGM ninja involved with that project is expected to walk the line before the product is presented to a client or introduced to the world. Walking the line requires that a ninja momentarily assumes the perspective of a client or consumer while going through the entirety of the project from start to finish in order to spot any imperfections, typos, malfunctions, etc. This applies to websites, many chat flows, social media posts, emails, proposals, etc. Follow up at AGM Marketing, we are responsible for getting an answer to our communications, questions, or concerns. In order to make forward progress, we must follow up, follow up, and follow up until we do get an answer. We believe follow up is one of the keys to success because it always leads to execution which in turn leads to forward progress. Be committed. Commitment is defined as the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause, activity, etc. AGM Marketing believes that our organization will grow in direct proportion to the number of staff committed to our goals of helping small businesses flourish and prosper. Commitment requires a make-it-go-right attitude which will always lead to helping clients achieve success while working with AGM. True AGM ninjas will always operate with a whatever-it-takes mindset when it comes to their work. At AGM, ninjas don't operate based on schedules, they operate based on results. Grow together. Every single ninja that consistently applies the above core values is guaranteed growth as an AGM marketing ninja. At AGM, our leadership believes that a group that's winning is composed of many individuals that are also winning. AGM leadership is committed to a culture of wealth sharing where every ninja going above and beyond for his or her group will be able to systematically grow as the group grows. All right. Can you believe that wasn't Manuel? That's like, it's so, you, you, we're gonna show you how to do that at the end, by the way. Um, because now, you, his voice you could kind of tell and you know the mannerism, but it looks so real, right? And even his voice uh, sounds. So imagine you have, how, how many in the room are, uh, have an actual business already, a business owner? Okay, because the majority of you. Um, but even if it didn't, but for those of you who do, imagine all your standard operating procedures and all your policy, you just upload a script and now you have all these tutorial videos for your employees. Isn't that amazing? You can do that. So that's one of the things we're rolling out so that you don't have to sit there and record anything. You'd record one time. But great job, Jimmy. He did that video. Manuel wasn't here and it was fantastic. So thank you, Jimmy. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit of why, uh, how that, and why we, sh we decided to show you guys that today as well. Um, how, to use, how to grow your brand using public relations. Um, I'm going to define also and take apart the difference between branding and public relations, because those two get mixed up uh, very often. So I want to I cover that at some point. Um, <clears throat> And I also want to share with you some of the successful actions that we've done uh, because I was telling Angie, for example, that believe it or not, even though we're a marketing agency and we generate a ton of leads and we're good at generating leads, um, our revenue actually comes more from our public relations actions, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, we did this, we dug into our income and um, last month we had our highest ever income in, in, in the history of AGM. So I started looking, okay, where did the money come from and then where did the clients come from and tracing it all down to the origin. It was a big task and it was um, relating a lot coincidentally because it had nothing to do with the presentation from our public relations actions. So I want to share some of those with you as well. 
Um, let's define it first because this way we're all on the same page as to what it means and we're not using different terminology because it is such a, in a world where there's a ton of um, coaches and uh, marketing uh, individuals, etc., cetera, uh, the terminology and the concepts could be thrown out differently, right? So it's the actions a business government or individual takes in promoting goodwill between itself and the public, the community, employees, customers. By the way, goodwill from the Oxford Dictionary means friendly, helpful, or cooperative feeling or attitude. So it's, it's the actions, and a lot of you, some of you that I asked if you had a business didn't raise your hand, you're in the right room. It's the individual's take. You have, all of you, a personal brand. Okay, just want to remind you that. You have a personal brand. And when people talk about you, they think something of you, right? No, you know, whether we, th we think with that or we don't. I gave a whole uh, lecture to our employees about just this particular concept about building a personal brand within the organization and how they can use um, PR to grow as an individual, get noticed, and... Um, and, and make their results and their efforts more known to the group, and that that would inevitably like, um, add so much value to them that we would be forced to help them grow as, as uh, managers, Manuel and I, right? All right, definition number two, the methods and activities employed to establish and promote a favorable relationship with the public. So it's the actions or the method that you do. So those are the two definitions I'll be using tonight, okay? Um, I think one of them is Merriam-Webster, and I forget where the other one came from, but they're dictionary definitions, okay? <clears throat> so, PR is a technique of communication of ideas. So it is a technique. It's not the only technique, but it is a technique in which you use to communicate your ideas. And if done right, it will, pre it will create a favorable, a favorable um, impression with what your audience. Um, and let me see here before I go. OK. so. The difference between branding and PR. So branding, when you think of Nike and you think of a phrase, what phrase do you think of? There you go. That is branding. It's not creation of goodwill. You may not even favor Nike. You might be an Adidas person, but you think of that, and that's branding. Phil Knight, the CEO of Nike, was talking to a room uh, not too long ago, and he said, um, <clears throat> Uh, stand up if you run uh, once a week. And so a majority stood up, and then he said, uh, stand up, stay seated if you run three times a week. And some sat down, and, said, and then he said, uh, for those who run five times a week, and you know, some sat down. And he said, out of the, those of you that run five times a week, uh, do you run when it's cold, it's snowing, it's raining, it's dark, no matter what? Some of them sat down, but the majority of them stood up. And he said that we are at Nike, the cheerleaders under that light post that are cheering you on as you're running at when, whenever the conditions, no matter what the conditions, you still just do it. And um, he was communicating the branding of it. So that's the main, main in its simplest form without getting so micro into the difference between them. Make sense? Yeah. Okay, good. It ain't gonna generate a lot of leads for you or a lot of um, business for you necessarily, but it is a good thing to be known for something because it could lead into that. If you are the uh, best at something, I mean, if there's a relationship and to somebody's looking at to the, the, the what your brand stands for, you definitely want to keep branding in. Um, <clears throat> but going back to the definitions, here's your personal brand, if that's what applies to you, or your company. Every day you take actions. Those actions communicate a concept to your audience. And the actions could be your communication, the way you communicate, your professionalism, 
you saw some of that in the core values. The vocabulary attitude, you see the core values a little bit here? I could have made a list of them. Yeah. But now do you see how we're tying in the core values with the PR of our company internally? If, if you saw the video. They're not all here, but appearance, skills, um, you know, figure it out. Like these are the things that, that there is a connection. So um, no matter whether you're conscious of it or not, the actions you take are communicating a, a, some, some favorable attitude towards your brand. Um, is there a particular place that you shop, sir? Grocery shop, to be specific. Walmart, okay. That your, that's your favorable location, right? So they somehow created an image or something that made it to, that's where your favorite spot is, right? To grocery shop. So here we have, this is a, a big one, right? Appearance, right? For, for public relations. Um, you know, the environment is an appearance. The way we dress is an appearance. These are big things that, oops, let me go back. This is our first, our first uh, office. This is Ernesto. He took a, uh, a picture in our first office. That's our little organizing board. And we, had, we were in a closet. And, uh, and we put this fake post. This didn't exist. We made it just for this. And it says, call, your, call us for leads or whatever, right? And then there's a real picture here of the back. You can see that the image, and it stands out as something that you're going to want to, to reach out more towards the, the you, you can see the image, how it affects you, right? How, how it plays a role in you, the audience, right? Um, obviously very important. So you know, going back to the actions here that you take, um, I want to f do a quick little exercise. And you can twin up or, or do it on your own if you have an iPhone. This is really important. I told my, my staff to do this. And this little drill is to write down five things you want your brand or your personal brand to be known for, because this will make sense with the rest of, of the workshop. So let's just take um, a quick little time to do this drill. Let me see, where's my clock? Okay, great. That way I know when to stop it. And anybody can share with me as well if they want to, to see if, you're, if you have questions on how to do this. Like, what do you want to be, your brand to be known for? A lot of the times we don't do this. So you guys can uh, uh, talk it out between yourselves if you want. Get some ideas going. Five things. You know, these little exercises are good because we never really take the time to say, like, what do we want to be known for, right? And if you don't know what you want to be known for, it's hard to create a strategy around, uh, a PR uh, strategy around this thing. What do you want... Yeah, what do you want your audience to think of when they think of your personal brand or your business? It's hard five things sometimes, is what I've been told. Imagine if I would have put 10 things, you guys would have left, left. Okay, I'm done. Feel free to do five for your personal brand and five for your business brand if you want as well. Five things, one minute left. If you guys want more time, I can give you more time. That's not a problem. All done? Yeah, okay, good.
All right. So does anybody want to share the ones they come up? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Okay, wonderful. I like that. Anybody else want to share? No. Yeah, go ahead. Um, integrity. integrity. I can repeat it, or if you. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Sally. I appreciate that. Integrity, safety of the product or service, positivity, good customer service, and availability of the product. Awesome. I like that. All right. So if we go back here. What we got to do is tie those actions that you wrote down. And by the way, these are not the only things that you can do. It does say et cetera because I ran out of space. But you can, for example, um, let's say you have a product and you're trying to communicate safety. You might want to look at the packaging of your product to see if it communicates that. Because remember, it is a technique of communicating ideas. Remember that definition, right? So you might want to say, is, is that communicating, is it tying in? If it's a service, well, for example, one of the things that we wanted to be known for at AGM was that it was, that it was high end, right? It was high end in terms of the technical experience that we, that we wanted to offer. And so, for example, the building itself was taken into consideration when we built that. Um, the tr true story, Manuel will tell you every time he gets the opportunity to tell you that I wanted carpet. And he wanted this. And we get praises on the floor because it somehow communicates a higher end. Um, you know, so those are just concepts, right? Um, the televisions that we chose, they do certain things. Um, you know, we just have, we try and somehow focus the, the technicality of things into our image, right? So we try to, to, try to communicate that, right? Um, marketing ninjas, you will see that on the, on the, um, um, on the walls and anywhere we can, we can throw the ninja, you will probably see the ninja somewhere, right? Um, again, we're trying to communicate that it's like, it's very high-end skilled stuff, right? So, <clears throat> you can do the, take your five and see how you can communicate those things. Now, I'll give you some help with that. Okay, so... When PR is used for the improvement of things and ideals, conditions, or any other promotion, we call this good PR, which is the opposite of bad PR, a term often used to describe negative press. You probably have heard that, right? And the reason I, I clarify that is because in dealing with products or people in good PR, the PR rep achieves as his first action, rep representative, PR, whatever you guys call it in your organization. <clears throat> the PR rep achieves as his first action knownness. That is the condition of being known. Ness is the condition of. That's what the condition of being known. Meaning get yourself known. This is done by simply repeating continuously on as many channels as possible the identity of what he's trying to represent. So a lot of people, when they start their business, they come to us and they're like, man, I want to pay you for ads, but I can't afford to pay for ads. Have you guys have been in that situation? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, I want to do internet sales, but I just started and nobody knows who I am, right? And so the first thing when you start a business or you, or, or, or if not, but if you're starting your PR activities, the first thing you want to do is get known. That's what you're trying to do as your first step. And you can use PR techniques to get yourself known. And what, what are those techniques? Well, it says, repeat continuously on as many channels as possible the identity of what you're trying to represent. Give you an example of how we did this. I'll give you multiple examples of how we do this. 
Channels, communication channels, right? That's what that means, by the way, not TV channels. Like, don't buy 50 commercials for different networks, okay? Um, you have multiple channels of communication, right? Um, and you want to repeat the, the, the concept on these communication channels. So you may have heard Manuel speak of like what we do with, with um, one of our customers who's well known, Dr. Eric Burke. He's got 10 million subscribers on YouTube. So Dr. Burke gives us one video a day, right? Long, long form video. And we take that video and we put it on YouTube. Then we take that video and we download the transcript and we make a blog out of it. We extract the audio and we make a podcast out of it. And then we chop it up and make clips and we put those clips on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, Pinterest, whatever, right? So now he gave me one video and we make a thousand posts a month for him. We are repeating his communication of what he wants to be known for the king of keto, on as many channels as possible. Make sense? Okay. Uh, there is uh, another client who's well known in the marketing space. His name is Jason Flatland. Same thing. He gives us one video. Um, we take that video and we make it into dozens of, of pieces of content a day. Um, Joe, how many pieces of content do we make for Jason a day? It's a lot less, but just to get an idea. 27 pieces of content a day from one video, right? So you can see that um, the magnitude, right? Now these are big figures. He's known as the king of webinars, right? That's what he's known for. All right, now that is your way of, one way of doing it. Not that's not the only way of doing it. Uh, I'll give you an example how we did it. During COVID, um, we used to have a course that most of you may have been familiar with called Facebook Master's Course, right? You've, uh, you guys ever heard of that one? Okay. This course we used to sell for $2,000 um, uh, a course, right? It, it cost $2,000. And we used to sell it on webinars. And we did great. It was already selling, selling. It already had sold over $2 million. Uh, and when COVID hit and there was like all this shutdown and people were told to go home, we're like, well, if businesses aren't there, who are we gonna call? I think we only, I said, Manuel, I think the only thing we could sell is the course right now, right? This is, there's no mention of PPP or anything, like the people are at home. And um, I said, um, Manuel, I think we should sell it for a thousand bucks and do 50% because they're not even working. So like money's gonna be an issue, right? And he says, uh, hmm, let me think about it. I'll tell you tomorrow what we're gonna do. And he comes back tomorrow, the next day, and he tells me, I, I, I figured out what we were going to do. And I said, good, I'm thinking, you know, 1000 bucks, 1500 bucks. And he says, I'm going to give it for free. And I'm like, what? That doesn't pay the bills. Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And he said, I'm going to give it for free because I don't want people at home watching Netflix. I want to empower them to um, be, you know, working and, and get their businesses, um, you know, uh, out of whatever situation they're in. And I, I want to empower them and I want them to learn, but I'm going to get, I'm going to ask for something in return. Write all this down. I need to create, they got to be active. If they're not active every day, um, they get booted out. I need uh, them to share it with their friends. So use this app and create a contest. That's what the app is for, right? And this is how we're gonna know that they're actually sharing it. So it's an app called UpViral. Some of you may have heard about it. Um, and I need to get some press releases going. And we're gonna name this a humanitarian campaign. And we're gonna position this as a scholarship, okay? We're gonna give the $2,000 scholarship. And we're going to do a series of, of press releases because first we're going to go in and we're going to say humanitarian campaign, free scholarship. Once we get people in, I need another one that says how many millions of dollars we've given away in this scholarship. So it's two angles we're going to hit this with. 
<clears throat> so I write all this down, and I'm the operations guy, so then it's like, oh, God, I got to execute on like a bazillion things. I don't even know how to do some of these up viral things, but luckily we have the figure it out approach, right, that you guys saw there. Um, so we have some skilled ninjas in, the, in, in our staff, and they put the viral contest together for me. And after a certain amount of months, we had um, over 30,000 people signed up and done this, this course, okay? So you can do 30,000 times 2,000. That's a lot of money given away, right? And so I did the math and whatever that added up to, and I did another press release. And the press release that we did, um, it went pretty viral, not all of them do. But this one, if you would open up like your iPhone stock app, it was like President Trump and Manuel Suarez right under him. And it's like humanitarian campaign. Um, yeah, it was, it was really good. Now, also, part of this is they had to give us a testimonial video. That was part of the thing. And we did 7,000 testimonial videos that we have. Um, that, that was part of like the requirement, right? Actually, it wasn't a requirement. He said it was optional. It was going to force that. But we still got 7,000 amazing um, uh, testimonial videos. So um, 30,000 names, numbers, and emails of marketers, 7,000 uh, testimonial videos. So you guys can, you know, I was like, well, how are we going to make money out of this? When you get attention and you have a, a list of 30,000 name, numbers, and emails, you'll somehow uh, monetize that, right? So that is one way we got 30,000 leads in a matter of, I don't know, I don't know the exact, he'll remember, but that whole time period's a blur to me that I don't remember how, how fast we got that. But to this day, there's a lot of people that thank us for that course and for that action and people that say it saved their business. And that is goodwill, friendly, helpful, and cooperative feeling or attitude towards this. Does that make sense? Okay, good. So, you know, there's just creativity involved in PR, right? There's creativity and there's a lot of tools. I'm gonna to show you one tool of how um, you guys can do something similar um, on that. So, as many channels as possible. Let's do another little exercise here. And what are five methods, channels, that you can use to make yourself known? Um, and let's write those particular ones down. Carly, do we have more chairs? You want to let her know if we have more chairs so we had more people come in. So five methods or channels. I gave you some ideas with what we do with Dr. Berg or Jason Flatland. How can you communicate and make yourself known? Remember, your first action in PR is to make yourself known. It, and known, obviously, ideally, you want to make yourself known for those five things that you said you wanted to be known for, right? Um, in the examples that I gave of Dr. Burr, it's like he's the king of keto. His, the content is mostly going to be 90% ketosis, the ketogenic diet, these different uh, topics. Uh, for Jason, it's going to be marketing and sales, because that's what he does. Okay, does anybody want to share some examples of what you wrote? Just, all right, go ahead, sir. Oh, I can repeat it since they'll, go ahead. Facebook? TikTok? Instagram? Google ad and press releases. Those are all good ones. Anybody else? Yes, sir? What? Twitter, LinkedIn. Okay, great. 
Websites and blogs, great, great. All influencers, I love that one. That one's really good because uh, more people believe what other people have to say than us sometimes. It's just a, 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 a thing, you know. Sometimes I'll tag on a, if I'm trying to get a, a new client, sometimes I'll tag with, meaning I bring in one of my clients in and I say, hey, can you say um, that, uh, you know, what you think about us. It's like, true story, uh, um, we were talking to a client and, and Manuel uh, says, they knew Dr. Berg, so we call Dr. Berg, and then we say, um, Doc, can you explain your experience here with us because this person wants to do something similar. And he says, uh, well, funny you should call me, Manuel, because I was just uh, about to let you guys go. And then I was like, what? And he's like, ha, 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 just joking. And then uh, <laughs> he's like, no, oh, I love these guys. I've been with them for five, six years. Like, I'm, they're not going anywhere. It's like, and, and, and we use that. So influencers is, is such a powerful tool because sometimes um, what other people have to say about your brand can be so powerful. Um, and buy so much creativity, right? Um, so, within these channels, it is important for you to understand that some of them, and this is just like a side note, extra value, not PR related necessarily, that some of these placements can give you more reach than others. So, for example, Facebook has a placement called a reel. You guys have seen that, right? Yeah. That is going to get you more reach than if you do a regular post. And so you want to leverage some of these platforms correctly, right? If you're gonna do a blog, you know what? Hot tip, your blog should be 500 words or more. So there is data available as to what action you're doing um, that could give you more value uh, than what you're doing. And a lot of the stuff we cover it here during our workshop, so if you continue to come, you just stay relevant, right? And we'll tell you, hey, this is working really well, this may not. Um, we did one TikTok account for, um, you know, uh, our sister brand next door, which Manuel uh, is the owner of, Natural Slim. They did zero uh, from zero to a million subscribers in seven months, seven or eight months. So it could be done, yeah. It was just repurposing um, the founder Frank's content. We micro clipped it and we just kept putting it up there four times a day because we already had the content. So not necessarily everybody could do this, but, but you could if you wanted to be like uh, Jason or, or Dr. Burr, like they, they create the content. But in Frank's case, um, you know, we put the content up, uh, and in eight months, we had one million subscribers, tons of views, tons, of, and the brands have been exploding. And, um, you know, it just tells you the power of communication. And they want to be known for a metabolism, you see. And this is really important because you guys said five things you wanted to be known for. A lot of the times, um, you also want to have that. Make, be known for those five things, but ensure you, you, you have this somewhat of a niche because, um, you know, next door, natural sim is weight loss, but it's fix your metabolism. You see, it's not just lose weight. It's just, it's very specific. The weight loss is a, a byproduct of, of getting healthy and fixing your metabolism. All right, so those are the five things here. Now, where are we at with time? 6.54, okay. So I gave you an example of some of what we use for a press release as well, right? So the power of a press release is, is, is really, um, I'll give you this uh, um, as, a, as a free tool that you guys are going to show. I'm going to show you how to do a press release really fast in case. Is there anybody here that does not know how to do a press release? Oh. Okay, good, good. I'm sure we have some people online and we'll, we'll, we'll give you some ideas of this. So we use it um, for everything, right? Like here's a real press release, and this is when we open. You know, attention grabbing media announces to grand opening of their new offices and building. Um, here's one where we, these are real, 
Um, you could see we're the ones putting it out ourselves. And we worked with Damon John, what is it, a, a little bit over a year ago. And we worked together for a while. And so we're doing press releases of, of us working with Damon John. Now, what would be the benefits? Does anybody know some benefits of doing a press release? What's that? Links? Okay, he's saying links to your website. Great, so I'll repeat that just for the online folks. It says, he says that when you do a press release and you can get on Yahoo or Fox or the bigger sites that you can use that and leverage that on your website and it will help you with your, with your positioning and credibility, right? Something very similar to what we were saying about the um, uh, influencer. Somebody else is saying it, thus it must be real, right? 7,000 testimonial videos that we had, it must be a good course is the concept that you're trying to, you're trying to be known for something. So if you can leverage other people saying that and validating that for you, why not, right? Um, yes, sir, go ahead. Perfect. So he's saying that investors do monitor these and look out for these, and if they like the concept or idea that you're rolling out with, they might be interested in investing with you. So all very true. Uh, another example was somebody picked us. This is News Channel 8, um, and they did a, uh, this is like a video um, from it. I was going to have the actual video, but at least you get to see the, the concept here, right? Um, I mean, the interview just happened here we, in, behind that wall. He didn't even have to go anywhere, but it came from a press release. They reached out, right? So, um, <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of benefits, but there's one benefit that's very similar to what this gentleman said of the, of the uh, as seen on. You've seen this on websites. They'll put it on the bottom, right? Um, but there's one benefit that's really important, and is if you can take this image here and post it on social media, that lets your audience know that it must be true. So they may not go and Google it and read it, or maybe they do if they follow the link and are interested in it, you get both, but you can share these very easily to different sites, and because it's on the press, for some reason it has this power to buy credibility. New offices in the Largo area, like, because we put it as a press release, it must be a big deal. Um, partnership with Damon John, um, welcomes Facebook Masters Marketer Manuel Suarez on his PowerPoint. This one's actually PowerPoint, it's just, actually this one, guys, is just like an interview. Like, we, he was on, on Damon's uh, show called Power Talks. It wasn't even the... The, the, the partnership announcement. It's just any reason that you can do to create a press release buys you so much credibility. So, you know, um, I, went to, I went to my friend uh, Heather's art show, and it's like she did an art show, and she can write a press release that, you know, she could come up with her own headline and say, because this is just us, right? You could say um, award-winning, if, it, if it's true, obviously, but it could be any award, it doesn't matter what, it's like award-winning artist, host, um, um, art event in the Tampa Bay area or you know, so, wherever. You can make your own headline and position yourself however you want, which is amazing. All right, obviously you want a bit to be true. And then, of course, you can create uh, your own um, promotion. And you share that on social media, and all of a sudden, you've increased your branding. Because, for, again, if you're in the news, you must be legit. Unless you're in the news for something bad, right? Uh, what's that uh, uh, American greed? No, you don't want to be on that show, right? It's, uh, okay, good. So uh, let me see here. Um, sure. 
Well, I'm going to show you something better. Okay, so one of the things that, let me see here. One of the things, let me log in here to ChatGPT. And uh, let me use another account. Let me see if my account works. If not, I'm going to ask Ernesto to come in here and put his, his password. I had it saved, but it logged me out, unfortunately. Uh, okay. All right, so let me use yours, Ernesto, because this way, um, uh, da, 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 da. so yeah, there you go. Go ahead and sign in for me. I tried, guys. I really tried to make it smooth, but thank you, Rob. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So for those of you who have no idea how to do it, you go to ChatGPT, and we're going to, by the way, we're going to have a two-day mastermind. I'll tell you a little bit about that, how you can do a lot more of PR actions with uh, artificial intelligence. But the first thing you, you can do is you could say, um, and I'm going to go very simple on the request because I don't have an excessive amount of time, and I want to get some questions and answers for you guys. But you can ask it very simple. You know, um, what is the frame work of a press release? So, and then it's going to give you how you should write a press release. Now, you could get very advanced with this, but I'm going very simple. So, I'm not even going to read what it says, but I'm going to say, uh, what is, who asked for headlines? Okay, what is the business? Furniture, okay, yes, Peters. Uh, okay, um, so, then is, so then you say, use this framework to make me a press release to announce the, oops. Oh, crap. Two ends. To announce um, n new uh, furniture that, that we just released. Now again, this isn't the most ninja because you can be specific with what type of furniture, when you released it. But now it's going to give me, oh, it is an examples of, nope, I have to stop generating. Broke oh, I broke it, okay. Uh, <laughs> even simpler, let's say make me a press release uh, for new furniture I just created. Okay, and we're going very simple here just for the purpose of an example. So, oh, okay. uh, it's given me wrong models here. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to go new one. This is why. Yeah, make me a press release of my. custom furniture. Okay. All right, so now it's making me a very vague, very broad, but it's telling me it's going to make me a very nice framework. Obviously, you can feed it what type of furniture you're releasing, where did the wood come from? But you can give it the data and it could give you the press release. And then you could say, give me variations, give me 10 headlines variations. And then you pick the one you like. You know, you could give it some data and say, give me 10 variations of a headline saying that, you know, uh, the, the, fur the furniture comes from such and such areas of the world, right? You could give it different data. Now, what you do is we like to use, let me go back here, we like to use these two um, press release uh, outlets. You don't have to use these and we have no affiliation with them. It's just the ones we've happened to use. Um, you could probably get a press release for as little as 300 bucks and it could keep going up. You can do press release in Spanish um, with 
e-releases has it in Spanish, and you can just ask ChatGPT to translate it for you if you, if you wanted to uh, get multiple markets, right? So these are the ones we like to use. Again, no affiliation, just want to give you a tool of, okay, now that I have a press release, where do I go with it? And then you wait 24 hours, they take to populate, and you, let's say you use e-release, you go into the account, and it'll give you all the links of who picked it up. If you got an exciting headline and it's a value, more people will pick it up. If you're just doing random stuff that is no interest to a, to, to, to a news outlet, less people will pick it up. So, the, um, so some, are, some of ours just don't get very much traction, and some of them do, you know? And um, sometimes you just want to do it so that when somebody Googles you, that stuff shows up first, you know? Now, I try to go look for the Facebook master press releases to show you those. I couldn't find them anymore, but those were three years old. So I probably three years of people posting and I'm done, right? So you got to keep, stay relevant. Um, you know, I try to look for some of the older ones that, that give you examples of the ones that did go vi more viral uh, or got more uh, news, and I couldn't find them anymore, but, um, you know, I just did one about a sister company. A lot of you were at this event where we, we merged um, a company, we, a software company we have called Honeycomb with another company called Dropify, and so then I, right after the event, and sent that out. And now when somebody Googles us, that was populating at the time. I don't know if it is now. But it'll say, like, you know, uh, you can add a picture, by the way. You can add a picture. The cheaper ones typically don't let you add a picture. Um, but the middle tier ones will let you add a picture of yourself or something of that so that you can get even better branding and exposure. All right. Yes. So she says that she has a friend that's just starting out, and if there's a uh, cheaper place where she could do press release, um, that I don't have the answer to because I don't know all the outlets. I do recall seeing that the cheapest was 300 bucks. Um, so that I don't know if you could get it cheaper than 300 bucks. Um, I just don't have the answer, but I would recommend that when you're starting out, your first thing is to get known, right? Knownness or condition of being known. So there's other things that that person can do until they generate enough revenue to then reinvest that revenue into something like a press. It's just one tool, by the way, guys. It's just one tool. Like we named out five channels. This is just one channel. And, um, and it's like a lot of people have interest in writing these out. I think it's really great headlines. If you do this headline, like the example I, I gave about Heather, or if, if you guys do one and, and you position Peter as, uh, as who he really is, an artist, right? Those headlines, sometimes people only read the damn headlines. Like, it's like crazy, right? But it's like, that's what matters. So um, there's other channels that can be used, right? And um, there's just... Some of them take a, a bit of work. For example, podcasting is huge. And people want to have guests on their podcast as they're looking for content, you know? So reaching out to, to podcasters that, that have some sort of subject is, is really big. We've, we've had Manuel on podcasts. And then we also have people on our podcast. And the benefit from that is, what, is the, what do you think the major benefit is that, that grows your knownness? Like, yes. The audience, because I, let's say I'm on your podcast, or Angie's podcast, or one of you guys' podcasts. They don't know who I am. I just expose myself to your audience, and we call that the stealing of audiences, because some of it will pour over to you, right? We've also paid to be on bigger podcasts, because it's like, okay, good, we're going to tap into that market. We know those are entrepreneurs, marketers that um, are interested in our content, so um, we've done that too. So, all right, good. How are we doing? Yeah? Okay, great. Um, I want 
advises on finding podcasts. So, yeah, um, I would have to give you the re. I have like a. a she's asking if uh, um, tools for finding show podcast shows to be featured on. I do have some data on it, but I just don't have it with me. I can get you a PDF afterwards. I just have to find it. So I do have a mic. Uh, some Juan has a mic. So. I want to be able to answer some questions. I know you guys have some questions, and at our hour mark, I ran out of time, but I want to answer some questions if there is any, and you can ask us how we do things for clients or anything like that that you guys may be interested on this particular subject. Yes, sir, we'll go over there. Uh, so you end up on Yahoo for your press release. So yes. you use that two website, the e-release and the other one. Can you choose like which website they're gonna publish your press release? So it depends. Can you choose your website? No, you cannot. But you, with the other one, with the e-release, if you pay a certain price, they'll put you on Yahoo. So there's some that you'll see like if you pay this price, it includes these things. It happened to include Yahoo Finance. So, you know, not all of, you can't choose all of them, and you're really trying to uh, get on news outlets, because then you got free press, okay? So one of the things that I did is, and now this was pre-chat GPT, I'd probably do a lot better now. So one of the things, and this is a hot tip for you guys, there is, um, I got one of my assistants to give to go into every local news website, Fox 13, News Channel 8, these are our local ones for you people online, and I got, and I scraped all the emails of all the reporters. I also added them to AGM's Instagram channel, because they seem to, and so then I would get my press release, and I sent them to them, and I would just send a, a communication and I bulked email all of them to see who would pick it up. So you can do that, sir. You can reach out to see if you could get some local television press. Um, a lot of these guys, you gotta hound them. It's like, you, you, I shot them DMs. It's like, hey, look, you're interested in this. Uh, we're helping the Tampa Bay community this way. And, that's, and they actually say, okay, let me take it to my producer. And so a lot of the times it's like this, this grunt work, if you, if you will, of like really trying to get in communication with people and get yourself known. But um, we, do, we, uh, we do have that. Now, once you have that list, it's like, okay, great. Um, and any of you guys can email me and I'll, I have my card and I'll email you the list if, for locals, um, you know, and you just hit the, all those people up. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you my card and it has my email on it or I'll put it uh, up here as well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Juan, over there. Okay, this will tie into, I think, what you're saying is like, because before a long time ago, the best success I ever had was getting free press. Yeah. But like back in the day, I literally went, I was like in New York and I went to like all these magazines and just like looked up like editors for like, you know, at that time it was ultrasound painting, so pregnancy. And I just wrote like all these things and I got free magazines, free TV shows, like some in California, et cetera. And that's where I got like, the people were like, oh, I think I saw you on this other TV show that I didn't even know about. So I guess, what's my question? Like nowadays, I went to look, there's not like so much paper magazines, so I guess, Probably what you're saying now would be the smartest way, like the e-releases, or if you have any other yeah. ideas on that. Well, there is, depending obviously on the industry, you have a lot of people doing shows, uh, virtual shows, like um, you know YouTube channel shows. Um, they do live. Uh, a lot of lives, YouTube lives, and they interview people. And so getting onto that, um, you know, getting onto the podcast that you want, a lot of the times if you follow the ones that you're interested that have to do with that field, you might, um, you can direct message them and start the, start the, the, the action. Um, 
Other than that, yeah, magazines is not the same, but the concept is still the same. And if you notice that increased your revenue when you were starting out, and that's why like when you're starting out, the public relations actions that you do are so key. Obviously, it's not just when you're starting out, but it will give you revenue. So I'll give you an example, a little bit more of what we do. So right now, this is an event, right? This is a PR action. We communicate things. A lot of you can have parties at your house if you don't have an event thing, and that could be a successful thing. You know, events are really key to bringing a community together and trying to create word of mouth or make yourself kn known for what you want to be known for, right? So this is a, a, a public relations activity that we do to try to communicate to you guys who we are and what we do. Um, and then we try to create some friendly attitude of like, oh, these guys gave me all this value and I didn't have to pay for it. So that is a, a public relations action. Um, another thing that is that what for us that we do is we go to events. This is really important. You guys are doing it now by being here. You're going to make yourself known probably with somebody else. But you want to be known um, and then use it intelligently to, to see who you want to do business with, right? Or sometimes it might be like you pay to get in a room, but then you can make the connections that you want to make. So, you know, true story, we, one of our clients is Brandon Dawson, who's Grant Cardone's business partner, right? And his wife, Natalie. And um, one of the things that we did is we went to an event and then Manuel just said, you know, um, hey, Brandon, I can do this for you. And he got in front of his face and said, hey, I, want, I can do this for you. I can provide this value. And then Brandon said, okay, let's go to dinner. And we went to dinner and then we talked. And then like a few weeks later, he was a client. So sometimes about that is public relations to going to an event is public relations for you, not just hosting an event. So those are some uh, uh, things uh, that could work uh, for you guys, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Question on PR events. So do you, how do you come up with the ideas of the events that you're going to be doing? Do you survey or do you have a plan or calendar? Like how do you go about like making this up or coming up with this concept? So for this, for a concept like this, we have every other Tuesday, right? And, and Carly, who, I don't know where Carly's at, she's over there running around, right? Oh, there's back there. She uh, coordinates who the speakers are going to be. We don't necessarily uh, have a specific topic. We try to look for speakers, obviously. You guys probably have seen some of our other speakers here. And then uh, sometimes we do it internally uh, ourselves, right, our staff, and um, we we just we don't necessarily survey it uh, per se but we keep it a certain theme marketing and sales that's what what we do but it is a thing that a lot of people underutilize no matter what your business is you can't have some sort of event that teaches people something about your industry and you will have people show up you know marketing is not as broad as health right so our social media followers isn't going to be the same as next door natural slim is there's different followers for you know if i was in the in maybe construction or if i was a mechanic there's going to be different audience sizes right so that's fine the audience you have will be the audience that's interested in your product so host events even if it's events in your house and then if you later want to um, host them at a rented place you you can Somebody asked us for our, our space and we lend it to them one time, you know, it's just, uh, you know, there is, there is things. But uh, a surveys is good, it's not a bad thing for sure, it's just answering your question is we don't, we just keep it themed, um, you know, this is what we're talking about. And we theme it around money making workshops, so that's the theme. The website is moneymakingworkshops.com, that's where you register for it, okay? So we'll do one more. And uh, what? Oh, who, oh, okay, two more, two more, and then we'll, we'll uh, over here, yeah? And then I'll stick around, by the way. It's just uh, I hit my one hour mark, so I want to be respectful. All right, go ahead. Hi, so um, my question comes between 
connecting the dots between like uh, in-person marketing with an e-commerce store. So creating an e-commerce store with, uh, you know, with clothing, but it, we're utilizing a, you know, a POD, so a print on demand company. So it's kind of like our hands don't touch it, but I like this aspect of the marketing with the press releases and things. And I'm kind of like, it's not connecting, <laughs> you know, the kind of marketing that I desire to do. And then what I'm in the business I'm actually creating. Okay. Did you do the, were you here when you did the five things you wanted your business to be known for? That no, little exercise? I know, I okay, missed, so I we had a little exercise and yeah. it's like you got to name out five things you want to be known for. Uh -huh. So that, from that is the basis of your strategy. Because okay. if you don't have a, you can't create a strategy of what you want to be known until that's defined. And so based on what you're trying to do, you'll have creativity come out. For example, you can order 10 shirts for yourself, get them shipped to you, and use people uh, to model that and then have content to then create what you want to be known for. I'm sure your brand is known for a certain, uh, it was a certain niche, right? Um, when I worked with Damon, I remember him telling us like when he created FUBU, for us, by us, right? That's the, 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 the niche or the thing he wanted to be known for more of a branding thing, right? But he wanted to be known for that. And uh, he said, look, the, the first uh, influencer um, were, were people, on, he's like, when you choose influencers, he's like, I didn't go to what is known as a backpack rapper. Those are your Eminem style rappers. He's like, I wanted to go with a flashy, interested in how I appear rapper. So he went to eventually LL Cool J. He worked his way up, but that was his like, who he wanted to leverage, right? And then that person communicated a certain image. Um, so there's just, there's strategies that you can utilize, but you have to define what you want to be known for before you can, can do that, you know? Yeah, you bet. And that gentleman had one and then we'll, we'll wrap it up here, guys. Yeah, just uh, just want to guys ask you about your one million subscription uh, on a TikTok for the one million basically yeah. for the seven months. Uh, in terms of the content and how you guys reach this one million in the seven months, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. The question about your post, you guys promote each of your post daily. We Everything don't pay organic. Any advertising? No. Nothing. No advertising. Influencers. No. No influencers, nothing. It was just really? straight out. Yeah, because how, how how many posts a day? Four a day. Four a day. Yeah, and four a day was the magic number. It okay. was something known and something that we were communicating, saying, "Hey, look, this is the magic number, magic formula. Four mm -hmm. days." Problem is, most people won't do four a day, mm -hmm. and so you know, it's just it's not like everyone is doing it mm -hmm. you know it's hard to create four pieces of content so today. basically it's zero promotion post during zero that's cool yeah okay yeah. when you get to a level like that you can turn off your advertising and make mm -hmm. millions of dollars dr burke does not advertise anymore got it's it it's okay. all organic content like there's some google stuff but okay got it. but at the same time you have pretty big niche and pretty big massive audience on the instagram and other platform sure okay, We're got everywhere. It. okay the same content is posted everywhere we just repurpose it how many followers you have on instagram when you start on TikTok? No, roughly no idea i just remember TikTok because it was recent and it was zero the other channels have been going on for years oh okay but got we it have okay about seven million on youtube got it got it okay no seven question. million on youtube yeah. that's all okay. i remember off the top of my head got you it. Yeah. look it up thank natural you. slim dot us mm -hmm. okay yeah thank you oh yeah okay yeah okay all right one more one more i'm glad you guys are in in intrigued and i'll wrap it Thank up you. i promise okay great yeah. so um do you recommend like an automated thing some kind of automated tool um for posting you know more rapidly or doing a program or something like that both i everybody's in a unique situation if you don't have the ability to create content or you have a faceless brand a lot of people have faceless brands in cosmetics or in supplement space they don't always have that um, there you can do both and we're going to be able to show you guys how to do that on um, here I'll show you on May 12 and 13 we're going to have a workshop on how you can do um, use different things like the AI that Manuel 
did how to do images and graphics so that with one button you could say, I want an image of a lady on the beach holding you know, this uh, supplement or whatever, and also make me the copy for the Facebook, uh, make me 30 of these so that I have content for the entire month and you can have it instantly. So we will show you guys. In fact, let me just read what it, we will do because it will answer that question. The basics of artificial intelligence. So this is for um, beginners uh, as day one, right? It's just an introductory session of all the basics and how you can learn to integrate it. No matter if you're eight years old or 80 years old, it doesn't matter, you're gonna learn that you're going to accomplish 10 times more every day with the tools that we uh, show you. So for those of you that read those num that I said those numbers of Dr. Berry's like, man, I can never accomplish those because I'm a one man or five man show. We're gonna show you how you can do 10 times whatever you're doing um, for sure. Um, you're going to leave the event with a workbook and it's going to detail how you can take your existing business, your target audience, your social media content strategy and implement that with the tools to really scale fast. What we did, you know, Natural Slim has been in business for over 12 years. AGM has been in business over six years. Like there was a lot of stuff that we are finding out that we could, it, it's like what we did in six years, people can do in six months. It's ridiculous, right? Um, content creation for your brand. Uh, that Manuel's gonna cover how you can create content at hyperspeed. Uh, creating and improving your whole e-commerce, that's for you, and your lead generation. It's gonna be one hour of that, and we're gonna build out the, the campaigns for you, um, the, the, meaning the entire funnel. We're gonna build it out for your leads or for your e-commerce sales, and that's everything. The copy, the creative, the landing page, everything, you're gonna build it out here. In fact, what we promise is that we're gonna make it so easy for you that if you're not satisfied, you get a 100% refund. That's how confident that we are. Now, for those of you that sign up tonight, you will get $2,000 worth of marketing courses that we have. This is a combination of some workshops, combination of e-commerce courses, uh, their digital courses, um, and you're gonna get access to all of this. Uh, that's what you guys get tonight, and I do have a couple people in the back that you could talk to and get more detail of like, if I come to this event, how can it help uh, my particular case? I know some of you have very unique scenarios. So, um, you know, what I've seen what we're putting together, it is really mind blowing because what took me a long time to figure out and read books, some of these things are just spitting it out. What took me to, so long to write policy for our company it's like mind boggling how fast and easy it is now. I plug in YouTube videos of Manuel and I have company policy now. Like some of this stuff is crazy, right? So um, I have a virtual assistant, like a little a help desk. I put all my company policy, everything I had. And now if, if somebody in the office wants to know what is the policy on uh, sales commission, they, they type that up and it pops up. It's really, powerful database, fantastic stuff. We're gonna teach you all of that. And uh, um, I got some of my guys here in the back that are willing to stick around and, and talk to you guys about it. So, oh. Yes, yes, you could do streaming or in person. There's some perks for being in person, but, uh, but yeah, you, you can do streaming. Yes, there is, and Ernesto, and I want to add something to yeah. it. Uh, you know, Manuel has been talking a lot about this mastermind lately to us, to the team, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. It's literally a no-brainer. If you can attend to it here live or in the stream, uh, you have to do it because what you're going to get, uh, which, by the way, to attend live is $550. All right, it's a two-day, Saturday and Sunday, May 12 and 13. Saturday, uh, sorry, it's Friday, Friday and Saturday. Saturday sorry, Friday. Friday and Saturday, 10 to 4. And, uh, and we're also going to stream it live. Uh, and if you watch it live, the virtual ticket is $350. So $350 or $550. And lunch included. Lunch included, obviously, for, for the one that attend live. And um, you're going to be able to at least double your production. Imagine doubling your production. 
Manuel talks about 10x, and, and I believe it. I believe it. Imagine if, you're, if you sit down for five hours and you write three articles, well, guess what? In the same amount of time, using these tools we were, we're going to teach you, you're going to be able to post, write and post 30 articles a week. How much, you know, how much would that give you back? It's literally a no-brainer. Um, it's so, such a good deal that no one can go home unless <laughs> we get 10 sales. <laughs> 10 sales, even if I have to pay for them with my own money. <laughs> No, it's, uh, it's truly a, a fantastic deal. Uh, everyone, uh, sh uh, you know, should sign up. Uh, as a matter of fact, does anyone want to sign up? Does anyone want to sign up for the money? All go. right, we got one. Woo! All right, good. Your name is? Robert. Robert, great. Uh, you're going to be local or? Local. Okay, Robert. <laughs> Robert, uh, Nick, if you want to get his information. Anyway, I'm not going to make this. Uh, a sort of like a <laughs> fundraise event, but uh, we have about six people here. That, so 10 to 4. 10 to 4, 10 to both four both days. Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday, 10 to 4. We're going to give lunch, and it's May 12 and 13. $550 for the local and $350 for the... One more. All right, Reynaldo, we got two. Look at this. Maybe this will turn into a... Uh, so we, we, we will cover more uh, public relations stuff. I just covered one tool, uh, gave you two outlets to put your press releases, and, and we will be covering a lot more on how to you can leverage that and your personal brand. Uh, definitely going to cover more on the branding side of things because that has been, um, you know, communicated to us as some, something they wanted. So we're going to do all, a lot of that and the ad side of things. If you don't want to hire an ad agency uh, to run your ads, we're going to go over uh, how to run some ads as well. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's event. I appreciate you coming. Thank, Thank you. you, Oli. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Oh, you, you want to do a selfie? All right, let's do a selfie, let's Ernesto, a selfie. everybody. Ready? Hey, you can raise, raise yeah. your hand. Yeah! Woo! All, All right. right, guys, thank you for coming. I appreciate it. Uh, my team's sticking around. We have Rob here. We have Juan here. Nick. Oh, I'm going to give you my card. Yeah, let me grab it. <laughs>